Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation in Spain, day 360 of the current situation. And it's a bad day for some of Spain's most wanted fugitives, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now let's get into the news and as I said, not a good day for some of Spain's geopolitical fugitives, people that left the country, escaped the justice system after the failed Catalonian independence referendum a few years ago. As we can see here, the European Parliament has lifted immunity for Puigdemont, Comín and Ponsatí. The plenary of the European Parliament has voted in favour of heeding the Spanish Supreme Court's request to lift the immunity of Carles Puigdemont, Tony Comín and Clara Ponsatí. The step removes one of the main obstacles, but does not definitively clear the way for them to be extradited and tried. The expected result, after more than a year of internal process, was 400 votes in favour, 248 against, and 45 abstentions in the case of the former president, and 404, 247, and 42 votes in the case of Comin and Ponsatí. The European Parliament has 705 MEPs, 59 of them Spanish. So a breakthrough there for the Spanish justice system with that immunity being lifted, but still not clear whether Puigdemont and company will be extradited back to Spain. Now the problem of illegal parties has reared its ugly head again here in Spain. As we can see, illegal parties are on the rise in Spain despite the pandemic ban. Illegal parties are increasing every weekend and the police are noticing that more and more of them are moving from flats to licensed venues. In Madrid alone, more than 400 illegal parties have been detected this weekend, but there have been parties and street drinking parties in other parts of the country. In Mislata, Valencia, some 50 young people attacked a police patrol with bottles, stones and firecrackers after they broke up a street party. For its part, the Basque police has imposed more than 200 sanctions of this type in the last two days. The age of the organisers and artists attendees varies depending on the venue. Illegal parties now also take place earlier, between 7 and 10 p.m. The police are asking for citizen collaboration to break them up and more responsibility. And in similar news, 25 people have been arrested in more than 400 illegal parties in Madrid over the weekend. The Municipal Police of Madrid intervened this weekend in a total of 414 illegal parties or gatherings for breaches of the anti-COVID regulations, 114 on Friday, 153 on Saturday and 147 on Sunday. Of these, 38 took place in tourist flats over the weekend. In some of them, there were more people than allowed and mask use and other safety measures were not adhered to. The rest were in private flats, but mainly in licensed premises. So there has been a decrease in the number of events in houses and an increase in establishments compared to previous weekends. So illegal parties and gatherings still a problem around the country, some 400 in Madrid last weekend alone, and it seems that some people still can't get it into their heads that probably it's not the best time to be partying. Pandemic? What pandemic? Now, as we know, the economy here in Spain is on the ropes, trying to avoid that final knockout blow, and a lot of companies around the country are complaining that government aid is not getting through. Why, you ask? Well, as we can see, a clash of heads in the government delays the approval for the plan of 11 billion in aid to companies until Friday. A new clash between the members of the government means that the approval of the public aid package amounting to 11 billion euros for the hospitality, tourism and commerce sector has been postponed to next Friday, as confirmed to RTBE by government sources. The measure was scheduled to receive the green light this Tuesday after finalising details this weekend, but new discrepancies within the government have delayed its approval until next Friday, the 12th of March. So that is, unfortunately, what we are dealing with here in Spain at the moment. Instead of that money getting through to the people that need it, the government is arguing amongst itself and delaying that much needed aid. So hopefully the government can get its act together and approve this new aid package. Now, a lot of people here in Spain have been scratching their heads recently, confused as to why there are foreign tourists roaming around the country, yet Spaniards are not allowed to visit neighbouring provinces. The face of the coronavirus here in Spain, Fernando Simon, has recently cottoned onto this fact, and he acknowledges that it is incongruous and difficult to explain that foreigners can come to Spain while the autonomous regions are closed. This Wednesday, Spaniards will know whether all 
autonomous communities will be closed for Easter to prevent a spike in cases of the coronavirus. However, there is no talk of closing borders or airports. This could mean that a foreigner would be able to take their Easter holidays, for example, in the Canary Islands, but a Spaniard who does not live in the Canary Islands would not be able to do so. So it just goes to show that some things are too difficult to explain. Foreign people can come to Spain, enjoy their Easter holidays in the sun in places like the Canary Islands, but we here in Spain are not allowed to go to the beach. Now on the subject of the health crisis here in Spain, although the situation is improving, we're not out of the woods yet. As we can see from this headline, Spain's downward curve stagnates and experts fear it could spiral into a European-style rebound. The speed of the decrease in the number of infections in Spain is expected to be very, very slow, according to epidemiologists who warn that the sharp increase in cases in several European countries could be reflected in Spain if prevention measures are not maintained until the risk scenarios are overcome. Now let's have a look at the vaccination campaign and see how that's coming along. We can see that complete vaccination has been achieved in 2.90% of the population and 6.94% of the population or some 3.2 million people have received at least one dose. When it comes to the health situation around the country, we can see that the risk level here says extreme, but it has been downgraded to high. The total amount of cases countrywide now hitting the 3.1 million mark. The accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days now sitting at 142. There have been 431 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are currently 9,761 people hospitalized in Spain with COVID, and there are 2,471 people in ICUs, which is just over 24% of ICUs. ICUs in the country. The Valencian community now, the risk level there has been downgraded to medium. The accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days now down to 65. There are currently 619 people hospitalized in the Valencian community with COVID and there are 202 people in ICUs which is just over 20% of all ICUs in the Valencian community. So as we can see, the health situation around the country a lot better than it was six weeks ago. Now, the health minister, Carolina Darias, yesterday announced that they're going to release an audit about how the pandemic was managed here in Spain. This is something that the government has been talking about for months, but it seems they're not really in much of a hurry to have the situation audited. One newspaper has decided that they can't wait any longer for the official version, so they've decided to publish their own. And as we can see here, according to that audit, Spain's central government failed in its management of the pandemic and the autonomous regions only did slightly better. One year ago today, on the 9th of March 2020, the community of Madrid ordered the immediate closure of schools, colleges and universities. That same morning, El Scadi, or the Basque Country, followed in its footsteps to curb the outbreaks that were overflowing in Vitoria. Thus begun in Spain the cascade of laws, measures, countermeasures, decrees, ordinances and restrictions that continue to the present day to try to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, which in these 12 months has taken the lives of almost 89,000 people, according to the official statistics agency, and a good part of the health of the more than 3 million confirmed cases. Faced with the continuous postponement of the order that many professionals have been demanding from the Ministry of Health, this newspaper contacted Joan Carles March, epidemiologist and professor at the Andalusian School of Public Health and one of the signatories of the letter in the Lancet, calling for this evaluation. To draw up together an exhaustive questionnaire sent to several hundred professionals, 172 of whom finally replied. So there we go. According to this newspaper and the audit that they carried out, the Spanish government failed in its management of the pandemic here in Spain and the autonomous communities didn't fare much better either. And is the situation better managed nowadays? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Rob. It's interesting. It seems like Spain is as much or maybe more of a right-wing country than a left-wing one, but the right is split more evenly between the extreme, Fox, and the centre-right PP, while the left is mostly centre-left PSOE rather than far-left Podemos. As a result, Spain gets a left-wing government. Yeah, Rob, thanks for the comment. To be honest, I'm not really sure. I've always had the impression that Spain is more of a left-wing country than a right-wing country. The right-wing seems to have a very core supporter base that always votes for them. And unfortunately, as we have seen, they have been split in recent times by the Vox PP divide. I think if we look at the governments that Spain has had in power since democracy began, starting with Felipe González, we can see that obviously Felipe González was in power for something like 12 years. 
Then we had Atna for eight. Then Zapatero for another eight, also socialists. So that's 20 for the socialists. Rajoy from the PP was also in power there for a while. I'm not sure exactly how long. I think five, maybe six years. And of course, now we have the PSOE Podemos coalition. So I think over those 40 years or so, the PSOE has dominated politics here in Spain. But it would be interesting to hear other people's opinions on this. What do you think? Is Spain a left-wing country or a right-wing country? Let us know. One here from Oliver. If you consider that the current PM won the election promising that he wouldn't pack with the communists and that the very next day after the election announced a pack with the communists, it is normal that people are fed up. I'm voting Vox next election. Yolva, thanks for the comment, obviously showing your discontent with the current political situation here in Spain and telling us who you are going to vote for in the next elections. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people like you, people that are moving further to the right, people that are not happy with the way the country is being managed, people that are not happy with the way that the government has lied to us in the past especially with what you mentioned there about the fact that they weren't going to join with Podemos and the very next day they did, and various other promises that the current Prime Minister, Mr Sanchez, has not been able to keep. And you've summed it up pretty well. People are fed up in this country at the moment. One here from Valentino. Hola Stuart, como estas? I want to ask you if rents in the Madrid area have dropped in recent months and if it is much easier to rent a whole piso than before the pandemic. Thank you so much. Yeah, Valentina, thanks for the comment. I have read in recent times that prices in cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, some of the bigger cities around the country, rent prices have dropped. Not really sure by how much, but some people have told me that they have got a bargain in recent times. Johnny, who collaborates with me on a weekly basis, recently said that he was able to pick up a bargain. He moved into a better house or a better flat and at a cheaper price. So I imagine that there are bargains out there to be found. But I have also heard that some people are having trouble trying to secure long-term rental accommodation in cities like Madrid and Barcelona because a lot of the flats that are becoming available are short-term rentals. They were holiday rentals before. And obviously due to the pandemic, people have put them back onto the market in order to try to get some type of income in these unfortunate times. So not really sure what's happening there, but you might have trouble trying to get a lease for longer than say a year. So make sure you keep that in mind. One here from Pamela, favorite parts of Spain? That's difficult. I've visited almost every province and seen some wonderful sights. Figueras, the home of Salvador Dali and the coast nearby was stunning. Jaén and the Lynx was special. Jaca and the Wall Creeper was also special. But Extremadura was magnificent for the wildlife and the hospitality. Valencia, Granada, Seville, Tarifa and Castilla-La Mancha are all well loved. But Madrid and the cultural opportunities there have to be the very best of Spain. Galicia in August is in sight, regards Pamela. Yeah, Pamela, thanks for the comment. And you're right, very, very difficult to choose one favorite place here in Spain. So many places to visit, so many things to see, so many experiences to be had. Andalusia, the Castillas, Extremadura, the north of Spain, La Rioja, also a nice place to visit. Navarra, I would recommend visiting that area as well. So as I said, so many places to visit in this country and very, very diverse. And Madrid, well, lots of cultural experiences, a great place to visit, but I think there are better places to live in here in Spain. But that's just my opinion. One here from Colin. Hi, Stuart. Thank you for the ever interesting videos. I agree. Extremadura is an attractive and interesting province. España profunda, no less. However, my wife, who is from there, likes to keep it a secret. So she won't like you letting El Gato out of the bag. Actually, it would be great to see you record a video from there once the pandemic is behind us. Hopefully soon. Best wishes, Colin. Yeah, Colin, thanks for the comment. We mentioned Extremadura yesterday because somebody wrote a comment telling us why it had such a hard time with the pandemic because lots of people obviously live in other parts of Spain, visit places in Extremadura for Christmas, the summertime, and of course that's one of the reasons why they struggled with the pandemic a couple of months ago. And you're right, it is an attractive and interesting place here in Spain. Lots of things to do and visit there, especially if you like nature. It has some fantastic national parks, but I won't talk about it too much just in case your wife gets angry with me for letting the cat out of the bag. So we'll keep quiet about Extremadura. And finally, one here from Admin Rise and Shine Cleaning Services. Hi, Stuart. When will the Spanish government review restrictions and any news on the vaccine passport? Yeah, hi, and thanks for the comment. Not really sure what the situation is with the vaccine passport at the moment. I know that there has been a fair bit of talk in recent times about trying to set one up. 
and I think the European Union has a preliminary draft or something along those lines, but nothing official yet. Countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal are pushing hard for a passport like that. But as we saw last week, there is some opposition from other European countries, namely France and Germany. And what's happening with the restrictions here in Spain? Well, various autonomous communities are starting to lift restrictions. People are getting a little bit more freedom back or a little bit more freedom than they have had in recent times. Places like Valencia, I think, are opening bars and restaurants up again so people can get out and about still keeping borders closed and I imagine it's going to be that way until at least after the Easter break. So I think that's when governments are going to review the situation again after that Easter period next month. So we'll see what happens. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.